Welcome back to Unleash the Power of Family, where our goal is to help you unleash the power of your family through daily Come Follow Me content you can share and enjoy. Let's dive into today's lesson. This is your friend, Emily. And late one night, you get this text from Emily. So my parents don't trust me anymore. And that's just the stuff they know about. I kind of feel bad, but don't even think God trusts me anymore. Advice? What do you text back? How can you help her through this challenging time? It's late at night. It's past curfew. So there's more to the story. Elder Dieter F. Utdorf said, quote, The scriptures and the words of modern day apostles and prophets are the sources of wisdom, divine knowledge, and personal revelation to help us find answers to all challenges in life. Today, we're going to dive into some doctrinal mastery and focus on John 3.16. In today's video, we're going to memorize John 3.16 together. Then we're going to review the principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge, search for how to help Emily, and apply the principles we've learned in finding things that can help her. This is John 3.16's key scripture phase, but it's all scrambled up. Your mission is to unscramble this into the correct order. Once you've unscrambled it, you should come back with this key scripture phrase. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John 3.16 Remember in the previous lesson easy. we had, we discussed three different ways to help you memorize scriptures easier. The first way was to write it and reduce it. Basically starting with the whole verse and then removing letters or words until you can repeat the entire verse without hardly any of the text. That's one way to memorize it. The other way, we showed you different ways you, to use the Doctrinal Mastery app in, you know, either through the Reduce approach or flashcards to help you memorize using the modern technology. And finally, we showed you the elephant method where you go through and you memorize one phrase at a time until you have it down with John 3, 5 as our example. So go ahead and you can use one of those methods or your own, and let's memorize John 3.16 together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can pause the video now and leave it on screen while you memorize it, or go offline. Let's put John 3.16 into some practical application. Imagine you're a full-time missionary and drawing on what you've learned from this lesson and the previous lessons about the atonement of Jesus Christ, what would you share with the family about his plan for them? Pause the video if you want to role play and then let's move forward. Let's review the principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge. If you can fill in the blank, here are three key principles. Go ahead, pause the video if you want to tackle this. Move forward when you're ready to see the answers. Hear the answers, act in faith, examine concepts and questions with a eternal perspective, and seek further understanding through divinely appointed sources. Did you get them? If not, that's okay. If you did, congratulations. So earlier on, we introduced you to Emily, your friend, and she had a challenge that her parents didn't trust her and she didn't even feel like God trusted her. How could you help Emily? First of all, you know that Emily's getting home late after curfew for the second time in a row, and she's had some pretty harsh arguments with her parents who say they're struggling to trust her, they love her, but it's, they're finding it hard to trust her when she keeps on uh, <laughs> violating their rules. She knows that she's been making some bad decisions and some stuff that the parents don't even know about yet, but you know about because you're her friend. She seems guilty, but it also feels like she's trying to ignore the issues and she's starting to skip seminary, youth night, and even church. She told you she thinks Heavenly Father is not real or doesn't love her because of her choices. She doesn't know what to do or where to turn. What do you say? How can you encourage her? What do you feel could be causing this to be a hard situation for Emily based on the scenario we've given you? If you were in her position, what would be some of your greatest questions or concerns? What could Emily do to act in faith? What would you say to help her 
if she felt that acting in faith was difficult. Let's talk about how we can act in faith. We know that Emily already feels like her relationships with her parents and with God are suffering because of the choices that she's making. She feels that being open with her parents and God would make matters worse. How do you feel that Emily's perspective could be inaccurate and incomplete? What is she missing here? What do you know about Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, or the plan of salvation that would be helpful for Emily to remember? If you were in her parents' shoes, what would you want Emily to feel and understand if you were her parents? Take a few minutes and pause the video to search for scripture passages or statements from church leaders that could help Emily to know that God loves her and that she matters. Pause the video if you like. I have some suggestions here if you want to see mine to give you a head start. So what I found is first of all, in gospel topics, God the Father is a great passage about how much Heavenly Father loves us. We have grace, which would help Emily maybe to understand that sometimes the choices she's making, that God still loves her and still understands. We have the topic of happiness, which explains, you know, if she's feeling unhappy and she's feeling like no one trusts her and she feels like she's, she feels guilty for the choices she's making, there is a way to find happiness by repenting and changing. We have parenting, which might help her to understand how much her parents love her and how hard they're trying to do the right thing by her. Scripture wise, there's three passages that I found. And again, if you want to find your own, go for it. First of all, we have John 3, 14 through 17, which we studied yesterday in class and verses that can help her to understand how much Heavenly Father loves her, that he sent his son to provide a way home for her. We have Doctrine and Covenants 18, 10 through 11. That teaches us that the worth of souls is great in the sight of God and that Jesus went through the atonement because he loves us. And then we have Romans 8, 35, 37 through 39. Amazing verses about how much God loves us, regardless of what we've done, that he still loves us. Go ahead and take your time to search for your own answers from the scriptures, from the church website. Uh, search. You can use Google if you want to search. But be careful to make sure you find good content from trusted sources as you search to find answers or ways you can help Emily. Pause the video if you like and search away. Romans 8, 35 and then 37 through 39 are some of my favorite verses in all the New Testament where Paul gives us hope that even though we make mistakes and even though the world may be against us, we are never too far gone for God's love. Let's read it together. Paul asks, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that beautiful and so encouraging that through Jesus Christ, we can overcome all things and that nothing can separate us from the love of God. What did you find as you searched for verses to help Emily? Did you find verses that you think would help other people? If you did, please share in the comments below. Share what you found that could help people that are depressed or struggling with choices or struggling to feel that they're loved by their Heavenly Father. What did you learn about Jesus Christ from your study that would help Emily in this scenario or help someone else who's struggling? What are at least two specific phrases from your study that would benefit Emily? Why? Again, Please share them in the comments below. In the end, as a friend to Emily, the best thing you can do is love her unconditionally and help her to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and know that he loves her and that he lived and died for her so that she can be happy. Today's challenge is first of all, to ponder, how do you feel that 
understanding how much Heavenly Father loves us can help us through this life? Do you feel that believing in Jesus Christ can give us hope and bless our lives and why? Next, how can helping others know that they are loved by God help them overcome life's challenges? What do you think? I invite you to share your feelings about John 316 with a friend or family member and share some of the principles of acquiring spiritual knowledge or some of the scriptures or quotes that you found with your family and friends that may be struggling. Please share this lesson with someone else and subscribe for more lessons like this. And that's our lesson today, Doctrinal Mastery, John 316.